Hey you. Let's chat homeschool mama socialization. Because if you were anything like me at a certain point in homeschooling, there were so many things to do and so many things to coordinate that it was really tricky trying to find time for you to build community. People will always ask about your homeschool kids socialization. Well, hopefully they won't always, but they have for many years. And that question has not faded out yet. That question will be asked about your child's socialization, about their experience at homeschooling, but we're not always addressing our experience as homeschool parents. I have a PDF and a link in my bio that you can find. It's called the Self-Care Check-In, Nurture the Nurturer. And it definitely includes building your homeschool community, making sure to either chat with, text, phone, if it's old fashioned phone, whatever way, but make sure you have connections with the meaningful people in your life every day, definitely every week, and build in the time that you can actually connect with real human people. But if you are available online for a homeschool community, I offer the Homeschool Mama Book Club and curiously we'll be talking about socialization, the S question, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can join the book club. It is also found in the link in my bio. But I'm gonna read a little passage from my book, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer. It's called, from a section called, Caring for Mama's Community. But I like to think about it as the S question for homeschool mamas. When we're doing something atypical, like homeschooling, we're eager to find our tribe, to share our load, to have someone to share the experience. We want to be part of a group that feels like we're doing life similarly and that we have resources available when challenges arise. But homogenous communities don't exist. That community of homeschoolers that thinks like you, parents just like you, homeschools just like you, and values everything that you value, they don't exist in great number. You're not gonna find that all the time. That would, that we would independently homeschool, that we would do this thing called homeschooling, live off the beaten path, step out of mainstream, screams, we don't care if we are just like everyone else. Sometimes it takes us a while to figure out that we're not trying to do things just like everyone else, and so we won't find someone that's identical to us. Organizations have challenging challenges agreeing on the same vision. Countries have difficulties deciding on their financial and political focus. Homogeneity doesn't exist in boardrooms, community planning committees, political parties, or anywhere else, despite the desire for that perfect connection. Even in churches, homogeneity doesn't exist. Members don't understand God the same way. It's challenging enough to get members to agree on the same pew color, let alone agree on a statement of faith. And in the most significant unified relationship, like marriage, homogeneity still doesn't exist. Spouses don't think identically. Sometimes we have different political views, diverse worldviews, different opinions on which brand of peanut butter should be purchased. Yes, in my house, Adams is the right answer. We're different, and yet we need each other. We weren't built to live our lives as hermits, even though we be very independent. In a world where self-sufficiency and individuality are prized and encouraged, we still can't function alone. For years, I had this notion, this fascination with self-sufficiency. I thought I'd want to live off-grid, no electricity, eat my own vegetables and fruit, milk my own goats, working on that, processing my own chickens, did that, grow my own grain, live in a tiny house with four children. I made a detailed plan. My husband reminded me that we would actually have three teenage girls in that little tiny 500 square foot house and that he couldn't be more than 15 minutes from town as an anesthetist on call. So we settled for a much larger house. 
with electricity, our own septic field and a water well. Now that I have 20 chickens, three goats, oversee an 800 square foot garden, start my own seedlings in January for vegetables and fruits and bake bread and forage in season. I've shared a cow and uh, now I know how to build a fire. Hand chopped wood in my fireplace. I've learned that self-sufficiency is a lot of work. It's an incredibly effort-filled effort goal. Self-sufficiency be gone because community enables me to share a tenth of that cow that I share. So I enjoy its milk, but don't, don't have to milk Clara twice daily. I enjoy Wi-Fi most times and electricity. I enjoy someone fixing the washing machine when it breaks down, helping me remove a tree that fell on the electric shed, clear snow from my private road. At, uh, I still like eating kale and blueberries and peaches when my garden isn't producing. Community helps us to parent too. Sometimes we don't know what to do. We've got an issue with our child that we haven't dealt with before. There weren't family rules enacted for that issue because it never dawned on us that we'd be dealing with a specific parenting issue. We decide how we're gonna engage that challenge because others have gone before us in this parenting journey. Now's the time we need community. We need a variety of people to voice their thoughts, to give us perspective, to provide us with ideas we hadn't considered. We're busy with our own family and there is barely enough time to bring the meat out of the freezer for dinner, pick up our girls from ballet on time and keep the radar on the toddler so he doesn't fall down the stairs. So community can help us by sharing driving, by sharing family memories with other families, enabling community mentors for our kids, creating homeschool family connections. But sometimes we need to recognize that the community is right in front of us and we're expecting a perfect community that reflects all the things we were talking about before. Who do you see all the time? Researchers say that you're more likely to connect with the people that you see on repeat, which might mean, you know, the FedEx guy or whoever delivers your Kiwi Co box, uh, the mail person, the grocery clerk, your piano teacher for the kids, for me, the farm supply guy, or the choir director. All these people make up your community. They may not be the ones that you instinctively think of as your friends, but if you present your authentic self, you will build community over the course of time. You need to create homeschool support nights. Invite your homeschool moms for a coffee or a potluck mom's brunch or whatever it is that you could do with them and create a homeschool community, a support person for each other. Even if you don't homeschool the same way, even if you don't think about homeschooling the same way, you're very much similar in experience of life than you might be with other moms. Having said that, you can build your community on whoever is your authentic relationship, the authentic connections that you have. You do not have to have a homeschool support group to feel supported in your homeschool choice. You can choose people that genuinely care about you that may not see everything about education the same way, or maybe they would, but they didn't have the opportunity to homeschool when they first decided to school their kids. But you get to build community with the most important people in your life, the ones that support you. That tells you too, though, that sometimes you have to actually ask yourself, am I sharing this homeschool choice with people that aren't homeschoolers because you're trying to look for support from them when really they're not with you in that choice. Don't search for validation in your homeschool choice if you already know these folks really aren't into homeschooling. They can though validate you and your kids and care about you and still be your community. Sometimes you can swap kids with a community. If you need time away and you're having a hard time getting any time away to even do some basic errands or 
doctor's uh, appointments or simple things like that, you can make a connection with another mom who is at home with her kids and exchange kids. This gives them a built-in social play date every week or every couple weeks and it gives you a little bit of space to do the things that you need to do, sometimes the things that you want to do. Homeschool family community can be built with whoever you choose to surround yourself with. And most importantly, sometimes you need to build that community because we all have moments in our lives when we definitely have crisis moments and we do need to rely on someone. When you've had to head to emerge with a child and you don't know where the other child is going, especially in this past year when you can't bring everybody into the hospital, when you head to a counseling appointment on your own, when you take an aging parent to a doctor's appointment, or when you deal with other life moments that happen unexpectedly, you will have a built-in community that can help you in a pinch. And you have to do it on purpose. It has to be the one of the things that's on your self-care check-in checklist, something that you really are making sure to invest time in. Because, and this is the thing, everyone asks about the socialization of your kids. Everybody wants to know, but what about socialization? They are not asking about your socialization, even though you know that you are constantly busy, occupied, driving someone somewhere, or having conversations with lots of people, definitely expending a lot of mental and emotional energy because there's so much real estate taken up in here just with your kids' stories and ideas and discussions alone. But you need that socialization. You need that community as well. If you are concerned about the socialization for your kids, or if you have any uncertainties about that, Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to discuss Rachel Gatherpool's book, The Well-Adjusted Child. I'm really excited to share it with you. After I read that book in the first, second, or third year of homeschooling, I don't think I ever thought about that discussion point again because it really created a very thorough, compelling argument for pretty much anything that you might think, but what about this? for socialization. Maybe this is the reason I should be concerned for my kids. It'll be put to rest. So join me tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Check the link in my bio. You have to go through the full registration process. It's a $5 purchase. It'll be an hour and a half. We'll begin the session with a grounding technique, a breathing technique, which will feel a little bit like you just stepped into a mini retreat. And that is a challenge to do after you've had a busy homeschool day. But this is what you need. You need to have those moments of just checking in emotionally with yourself and seeing where you're at. And then we'll dive, uh, dive deep into this book and really explore all the ways we can be certain that our homeschool socialization choice for our kids is the best one. So join me tomorrow. And if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, I'm happy to answer them. Put them in the comments down below. I hope you have a good week, and I want to remind you, as Van Gogh says, great things are done by a series of small things brought together, and I choose that quote because oftentimes we as homeschool moms see what we're doing as small. We're just at home, trying to keep the place surviving, thriving even. It's a lot of work, a lot of tiny little things that we're choosing to do, but all those little things will be brought together to make a great thing. So I hope you and your kids have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.